Welcome to the Fire and Earth podcast with your hosts, Jason Mefford and Kathy Gruber. Fire and Earth, giving you the keys to unlock your limitless potential. Welcome to another episode of the Fire and Earth podcast. I'm your co-host, Jason Mefford. And I am Kathy Groover. And today our prompt from my very handy phone uh, from the, uh, what is it called? Um, it's a, it's a, uh, <laughs> I'm totally blanking on what it is. It's an it's, app called. It's an app. I don't know what the <laughs> app is called. That's what I'm saying. Um, I don't know what the app is called. It, uh, it's called I am and it's for affirmations. Wow. Okay. Anyway, the prompt was, boy, it's going to be a good day. Um, how can I take some time out of my day for myself today? And apparently I'm going to have to, because I'm losing. <laughs> that was my time, that little bit of pause. That was my time. No, I you know that's such a great question. And I actually do love this app. And I got a little alert that popped up yesterday saying, are you still enjoying this? Do you still want these reminders? And I'm like, yes. You know, so often you're like, oh, I'm not doing this anymore. But I do glance at these and it does make me think. And, you know, I still do my daily pause. And sometimes my daily pause is based on what the app tells me to think about right now. So how can we take time out of the day for ourselves? Jason, what are your thoughts on that right now? Well, I think it's, you know, I think we all realize that it's important to do that. But I think most of us don't consciously do it. Right. Because so much of the time we're either feeling like we have to serve or do something for other people all the time. And so we never take time out for ourselves. or, uh, and, or, you know, I think a lot of times we think, oh, well, you know, taking time out for myself, that's going to take a lot of time, right? I'm going to have to go to the gym for an hour, or I'm going to have to go take an hour long walk, or, you know, do things like that. And so I think sometimes when we talk about me time or alone time, you know, we, we kind of put these unrealistic expectations on it and so then we never do it because it's like well i don't have an hour today to do that but i think you know even just like what you just you just gave two great examples right there yeah. right your daily pause and looking at this thing on the app those are two yeah. things that are just for you yep and, and it doesn't take very long for yeah. you to do either um and so i think you know the more that we can do little things even in only you know seconds worth of time or a few minutes mm -hmm. but something that makes us feel happy yeah. right and so a lot of times as part of my morning routine i listen to music yeah. because music makes me happy and so a lot of times i'll wake up with a song in my head and so i just listen to it three or four times it doesn't take me an hour to do it right you know but but it puts me in a certain mood it makes me feel happy um, and so even I think little things like that we can do mm -hmm. uh, to take time for ourselves. And a, a minute here and a minute there adds up to quite a bit of time over the day. And I love that you said that because one of the big pushbacks that I get from clients is I don't have time mm -hmm. or they feel like they're being selfish by taking, oh, I have kids. You don't understand. I have kids. Like, you know, millions of people have kids and millions <laughs> found a way to meditate and take a shower and take a shift. And put on there. I mean, it was like, why can't you meditate in the shower? Yeah. You know, I was coaching a client. We were looking at some time management stuff and she had these completely unrealistic expectations of what her day was going to look like. And when we sat down, I'm like, okay, so what do you need to get done in a day? What do you want to get done in a day? And she's like, well, I meditate for an hour and a half. I'm like, okay. She said, and I dance or do yogic movement for an hour and a half. I went, okay. She said, then I do an hour walk. I'm like, okay, so we're now up to four hours. She said, and then I have, you know, this at work and this at work. And then I have to do that. And I have to do it. And she was like trying to shove 30 hours into her like 10 hour day. And I said, so what happens or what does it look like if rather than meditating for an hour and a half and dancing, doing yoga for an hour and a half, maybe you do 90 minutes of them both like together. And she goes, wow. I can I do that? And I said, I was told I have to do 90 minutes. She That's was what it told, was, right? she was told that it didn't count if you didn't meditate for 90 minutes. And the yoga didn't mean a thing if it wasn't for 90 minutes. And she had this drilled into her head by some guru, um, which simply means gurus are, gee, you are us. Um, you know, she was 
it was drilled into her head that it didn't count that she wasn't a spiritual enough being unless she set all this time aside. But you know, I don't live in an ashram. I have shit to do. I can't meditate for an hour and a half and then do an hour and a half dance and an hour long walk and do all the meal prep. And I work. <laughs> you know, maybe if you're, you know, a kept woman or independently wealthy or, you know, whatever, where you can do that all day. But she was not any of those things. And we basically had to negotiate with her subconscious and conscious to allow herself to be a little more flexible with these um, demands on herself. Um, mm -hmm. So what can you do in those short amounts of time? You know, Eric and I sit down every morning. We're up to what, I don't know when we're airing this, but hopefully we've continued the tradition of every day. That's my new, I really want to dedicate myself to that for the new year. We do eight minutes a morning, eight minutes. And like yesterday, we didn't have time in the morning. So at nine o'clock last night, I said, oh, we have to meditate. And we sat down and meditate eight minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can do eight minutes, right? Or if you're doing the I am at peace, which is my favorite meditation, inhale, I am, exhale at peace. You can do it when you're sitting in a traffic light. Don't close your eyes. You could do it while you're in the shower. You could do it while you're brushing your teeth. You could do it while you're doing the dishes. You know, it doesn't have to be sit on the pillow, close your eyes, contort yourself into a position and ohm for an hour. You can make it what works works for you and fits into your life. It still counts, <laughs> but do something, right? Well, it, it does. And I even think too, I mean, uh, we can we can multitask. Now I'm going to say that again. I'm a man. I don't necessarily like to multitask, right? Because men are used to like move, you know, one thing at a time and move on kind of thing, right? But but there's a lot of things that you're doing during the day where you can multitask. They are um, they're activities that don't take a lot of brain power. Sure. Let's say right. And so one of you know, as a kid, I used to daydream a lot, and then I I kind of quit as an adult, and I'm getting back to that a little bit more. Mm. Um, and and I think it's you know one of the songs that I really like from Blondie is Dreaming. Uh, if you've heard you remember that song right dreaming and um dreaming is free right is is the line in there right and and it's nothing that really it doesn't take much time it doesn't take any money but you know you can take time for yourself and dream or or go into a different space because mm -hmm uh you know uh you are where you place your attention yep right and so it, that has a lot of different meanings but you are where your attention is so if i'm you know washing dishes well while i'm washing dishes i can be sitting there thinking about you know what i have to do for work or what the neighbor said that just pissed me off or whatever, I can choose to think about that while I'm washing my dishes, or I can choose to dream and be somewhere just for me, mm -hmm. right? Or think about something, you know, for me, or I could even sit there, you know, again, I might not have eight minutes to go sit on the mat, but could I sit there and breathe? Well, I'm breathing anyway while I'm washing the dishes, right? So what if I do your, I am at peace while I'm washing the dishes. Yep. Or, and I recommend this to people too, turn the doing of the dishes into a mindfulness exercise where you're not daydreaming and you're not thinking and you're not, you're just fully doing the dishes with all of your senses, feeling the water, smelling the soap, watching every single time I put the bottle of soap down and the little bubble goes poof. And it floats mm -hmm. away. I just watch it. Yeah, but we watched bubbles the other night because they were just like everywhere. It was so much fun. Eric had one in his hand. He's like, look at this. You know, and it's like it brings joy in this little bit of vacation for you. Mm -hmm. Um, and also I, I was gonna see how it was phrased again. How can I take some time out of my day for myself today? Um, I've gotten really not perfect at it, but I've gotten so much better at setting boundaries. And I have had some clients recently that are wanting to pull on my time mm -hmm. and I've been really strong and going, nope, can't do that for you today. Or that doesn't work for me. Um, you know, I'm on this board. We are in the midst of really huge things happening and we're meeting Sunday night and we're meeting Monday night and we're meeting all day Tuesday. And then we're going into our regular board meeting. And it's like, this is a volunteer board. <laughs> you know, this is a, I'm not getting paid for this. I have a full-time job. I have a life outside of this. 
And a friend of mine that I haven't seen in a while is coming through Santa Barbara Monday night and said, it would be so great to see you. Can we get together for dinner? Now I'm supposed to be on the Zoom meeting. It's like, well, they're getting me Sunday and they're getting me all day Tuesday, which means I'm not working. I'm not making any money. And they're getting me Tuesday night. I canceled my part of the meeting Monday night. And I'm like, I'm having dinner with this friend. Mm -hmm. Like, I have to set that boundary of, you know, this is like a, this is a volunteer thing that I'm doing, guys. You can't have me three days in a row. Like, I have to. It's important to me to take time, to spend time with this friend, to treat them to dinner, to cook. So I set that boundary. And it's like, I'm feeling better about, you know, you don't want to shirk your responsibility. And you also have to make sure you're taking care of yourself. Yeah. So it's like, I'm really proud of myself for being able to do that. Well, and I think the boundary thing is is great as a way to take time, right? And so, you know, mealtime has become that way for me now mm. too, right? Is um, sometimes I still have my phone in my pocket, but for the most part, phones are not in the dining area. Yeah. And we're just focused on conversation and eating. And that's it, Right. Um, and, and even that, even when you're with someone else, right. Uh, engaging in some kind of a, call it a mindful practice, right. Where you're just there present with the person, enjoying tasting the texture, you know, feeling the texture, tasting the taste, talking about the food, expressing mm -hmm. gratitude for the food, talking with, you know, whoever you're eating with, yep. that's taking time for you as well. 100%. Right? Because as, as long as you're with a person who who you love, who builds you up, who you feel like being in their space and with them in time is good and builds you up, then it's one of those activities that's for you. Yeah. Now, if you're sitting there with, you know, having dinner with somebody who's an asshole or that is, you know, pulling on you a negative Nancy kind of thing, okay, maybe that time is not for you, right? Because it's draining you instead of building you up. Yeah. But I think, you know, one of the biggest things about taking time for yourself is it's an activity that's helping you recharge Yeah. or helping you grow, right? Yeah. And, and again, that can be something simple. Washing the dishes, I mindfully wash my dishes. But a lot of times what it is, is it's it's a gratitude meditation of, I am so grateful. I love these plates. They're so beautiful. Uh -huh. They hold my food. I love you. I clean you, right? It's sort of a thing. Uh -huh. And and again, is that for me? Yes, in both ways. In a 3D way of, I have a clean kitchen. I have clean dishes yeah. the next time I need to use them. Uh -huh. But it's also a way for me to nourish myself spiritually and emotionally by having kind of a grateful meditation while I'm yes. washing dishes. Yeah. And we, I'm glad you brought up the mealtime thing because we talked about this before, you know, we talked about the love languages mm -hmm. and not only how that is you with somebody else, but also how can you take those love languages and feed that back to you and quality time, right? You know, quality time is one of those love mm -hmm. languages. And how do you spend quality time with yourself? Is it reading for fun? Is it a bath? Um, you throw physical touch in. Is it a massage? Is it a hug for yourself? You know, is it a hand massage? Um, I got this. It's not down here. It's in the bedroom, but it's this looks like a little George Foreman grill and you put your hand in it and it's a hand massager. Oh, it's the greatest thing in the world. I was like, expecting it to be like the former thing. You're like, no, you, just, you stick your hand in and it just it has all these little pneumatic things and it massages your fingers. And because I work with my hands so much, this thing has saved me. I'm going to get a foot one because they have those too. But it's like, that's physical touch right? You have acts of service. What can you do that's kind to yourself? You know, uh, and they all sort of combine. And then you have gifts. Can you buy yourself something nice? You know, um, I was just gifted a little bit of money and there's this painting that I wanted down by the beach, this art walk, local artist, gorgeous painting. I'm going to buy it and put it in my office because mm -hmm. it's going to make me happy. You know, um, what did we miss? Um, uh, words of, words, words of, of affirmation. Words of affirmation. You know, and that comes every day that I praise myself for something or do my affirmations or say how proud of my myself I am for setting those boundaries and, and taking time for myself. So how can you incorporate those into your day? Uh, there's endless choices of little things that we can do to appreciate ourselves. Yep. Yeah. And it doesn't take hours, right? So just 
just start placing some attention and awareness on it, even if it's just for a few seconds or for a few minutes. Uh, but the more you do that, the more you take time for yourself, you're going to be recharging yourself because yep. if not, if you, if you don't take time for yourself, right, you burn out your battery drains, you, you, all kinds of nasty things can happen to your body. Yep. And so just take, take a little bit of time, you know, for yourself every day. And, you know, again, hopefully we've given you some ideas for some things that it's like, oh, I never even thought about that. Or like your client saying, well, no, I was told I had to do 90 minutes. Well, actually, if you do five or eight minutes, that's probably gonna gonna do you a lot of good too. If so. you can do an hour and a half, awesome. But yeah. you know, not everybody has that luxury. And you know, this also doesn't have to cost you a lot of money. People, you know, say, they don't have time, they don't have money, and it's like you sitting down and meditating does not cost you a thing. Mm -hmm. You praising yourself and giving yourself words of affirmation or daydreaming about that vacation doesn't cost you a thing. So find ways that you can use minimal time and money to um, relax and spend some time taking care of yourself. Yes. I'm, yes. Are we done? Yeah. You, okay, good. <laughs> I didn't want to like stop and no. you have something else to say. You, you were bursting with anticipation. I'm Kathy Groover. I can be reached at kathygroover.com. And I'm Jason Mefford. I can be reached at jasonmefford.com. So go out, have a great uh, week and take some time every day this week. Uh, for yourself and we'll catch you on the next episode of the Fire and Earth Podcast. See ya. See ya.